Think back to uh, 1929, when Edwin Hubble first came out with his discovery that the universe was actively expanding, he was, well, he was summarily dismissed. Right. There's that famous quote, isn't there? There is. One very prominent physicist of the era called the whole idea, and I quote, the most preposterous thing I've ever heard. And that sentiment, that sort of intellectual outrage and disbelief, it's back. A century later. Almost exactly. Mm -hmm. Fast forward to today, and we're facing a similar kind of breakdown. The data coming back from the James Webb Space Telescope, the JWST, it isn't just surprising. It's challenging the absolute core principles of modern astrophysics. So our mission in this deep dive is to really get into that data, the data that has cosmologists so worried and understand the nature of this crisis. We're looking at sources that confirm the shockwave is hitting the standard model right where it hurts. And its foundational assumptions, how the universe should look and how fast it should be expanding. And the first clue was just breathtaking, wasn't it? The images of those ancient galaxies. Staggering. These are stellar structures that formed 13 billion years ago. I mean, that's the universe in its absolute infancy. Our models, specifically the standard cosmological model called Lambda CDM, they predicted these galaxies should be small. Messy. Exactly. Messy, simple, structurally immature. They were supposed to be cosmic babies. But instead, JWST saw these massive, mature structures, galaxies that look, for all intents and purposes, fully formed. They're rich in heavy elements and way, way larger than our theories allowed. They're cosmic heavyweights. Okay. And they just have no business existing that early in time. So the problem isn't just a few galaxies being a bit too big. No, no, it's systemic. As one Nobel Prize winning scientist put it recently, JWST has confirmed that, quote, our understanding of the universe may be fundamentally wrong. Wow. And this brings us directly to the theoretical pillar that is now uh, crumbling. It's called the cosmological principle. Okay, that sounds dense, but the principle itself is actually pretty simple, right? It's profound. It is, it has two main parts. First is homogeneity, the idea that the universe is roughly the same everywhere, structurally. And the second part is isotropy. And isotropy is the pillar that's under immediate attack. It's this, well, this belief that when you view the universe on the grandest possible scale, it looks the same in all directions. So matter should be spread out evenly, temperature should be uniform. And crucially, the expansion should be happening uniformly in every single direction. This principle, it underpins everything. The whole Big Bang theory, how we calculate the universe's age, how we interpret the cosmic microwave background. An ancient afterglow of creation. If the cosmos doesn't play by those rules, if it's not the same everywhere, our physics just collapses. And that collapse is now documented. A recent paper published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters confirms this terrifying cosmic curveball. Astronomers found really compelling evidence that the rate of universal expansion it actually depends on where you look. Hang on a second. Are you really saying that the universe is stretching faster in some directions and slower in others? Yes. So it's not like a smooth, even balloon inflating. It's more of an irregular, lumpy expansion. That is precisely what the evidence is suggesting. It means the cosmic clock, you know, it doesn't tick at the same rate everywhere, which renders all our existing calculations for the age and size of the universe. Potentially wildly inaccurate. And when you combine this directional problem with the structural problem, those oversized JWST galaxies, mm -hmm. you have a full-blown theoretical emergency. So this is more than just a scientific tension. I know the Nobel laureate David Gross, when he was discussing this, he insisted we wouldn't call it a tension or problem, We'd call it a crisis. Well, crisis is the right word. We need to understand what measurement has triggered this level of panic. Okay, so to really grasp the scale of this, we had to rewind. Let's go back to Hubble's original insight in 1929. He observed that the farther away a galaxy was, the faster it seemed to be racing away from us. It was a clear correlation, and it proved the universe is expanding. And that expansion, in turn, it implies the universe had a beginning. So it has an age. And by measuring this rate of expansion, what we call the Hubble constant, we should be able to calculate the precise moment of the Big Bang. But calculating that rate has always been difficult. Even before the Hubble Space Telescope gave us a clearer view, astronomers were getting wildly different results. I remember this. Depending on the data they used, the age of the universe was all over the place. From as low as 9.7 billion years to as high as 19.5 billion. And that lower number, 9.7 billion, was considered impossible. Because it would make the universe younger than some of its oldest stars. A complete contradiction. 
But the hope was always that better technology, more precise instruments would eventually make the numbers converge on one true value. But the opposite happened. The complete opposite. As the data got better and the measurements became razor sharp, the conflicting numbers actually grew further apart. That's what we now call the chasm of the Hubble tension. The deeper we look, the stronger the disagreement becomes. All right, let's unpack the two measurement methods that create this contradiction, because they're not just slight variations, they are fundamentally different ways of looking at cosmic history. Exactly. Method one looks at the universe's earliest moments, that primordial glow. It uses the cosmic microwave background, the CMB. You should think of the CMB as the faint afterglow of the Big Bang, right? An image frozen in time when the universe was only 380,000 years old. That's a great way to put it. And between 2009 and 2013, the European Space Agency's Planck satellite mapped this ancient light with incredible detail. By analyzing the tiny temperature fluctuations in that map and applying the physics of the early universe, cosmologists can predict what the expansion rate should be today. So using the baby picture of the universe to predict its current behavior. Correct. And this method, anchored in the physics of the early universe, it gives us a lower value for the expansion rate. It's about 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec. Okay, help us break down those units. What exactly is a megaparsec and why is that number so important? Sure, so a parsec is a unit of distance, about 3.26 light years. A megaparsec is simply a million of those. So a huge distance, roughly 3.26 million light years. And the number 67 kilometers per second per megaparsec? It means that for every 3.26 million light years you travel away from us, the universe is expanding an additional 67 kilometers per second faster. Got it. So method one, the early universe, predicts 67. Now what about method two, which looks at the modern late stage universe? This one uses what astronomers call the cosmic distance ladder. It relies on very reliable stellar beacons, specifically certain types of stars called Cepheid variables, and also certain types of supernovae. And these Cepheids are the key, aren't they? They're unique because how fast they pulse is directly linked to how bright they truly are. It makes them perfect standard candles. Nature's perfectly calibrated light bulbs. So by measuring how bright they appear to us versus how bright we know they actually are, we can calculate their distance with incredible precision. That's the technique. And this method, which focuses on the nearby late-stage universe, it gives us a consistently higher number, approximately 74 kilometers per second per megaparsec. So we have 67 from the early universe and 74 from the local modern universe. That seven unit gap is, well, it's not a rounding error. Not at all, it's a chasm. If our standard model of cosmology, the Lambda CDM model is correct, those two numbers should match. They're derived from completely different techniques, but they should give the same answer. They don't. They absolutely don't. And the key takeaway here is that this isn't just about two numbers disagreeing. It means the universe has had an acceleration history that our current model simply cannot explain. Something fundamental must have changed between that early epoch mapped by Planck and the current one mapped by the Cephades. Let me play devil's advocate here for a second. Couldn't this whole crisis just be some tiny error in calibration? You know, maybe the Cepheids are a little dimmer than we think, or the Planck data had some distortion. That was the first thing every single team tried to prove. And this is where the crisis really deepens. Adam Reese, a Nobel laureate and a key figure in that 74 measurement camp, has stated that measurement error as the cause can be ruled out with very high confidence. And the JWST, with its incredibly sharp vision, it confirmed this, didn't it? It basically proved the earlier measurements were correct all along. It did. The two methods really do deliver two different unreconcilable answers. The errors have been ruled out. The scientific community has been forced to accept that this tension is real. And it demands new physics. New physics. Yeah. Because if that expansion rate isn't the same everywhere, if it violates the cosmological principle, the entire architecture is in trouble. And the consequence of this violation is profound. If the expansion rate isn't uniform, if it really depends on direction, as that recent paper suggests, then our most trusted cosmological model just starts to crumble. We lose our certainty about, well, everything. The cosmos's precise age, its true size, even the fundamental constants that govern it. It all becomes uncertain. Which leads us to the most unsettling question of all. Why is the universe behaving this way? What changed the speed of expansion and why is it happening unevenly? One of the most tantalizing possibilities points to the biggest mystery in the cosmos, dark energy.
Right, the invisible force that's stretching space itself, making the expansion accelerate. We have always, always assumed that dark energy was the very definition of uniform. It was modeled as this smooth, unchanging fluid that fills all of space equally. But if the expansion is faster over there and slower over here, that assumption has to be wrong. It has to be. What if dark energy is, in fact, lumpy? or structured? What if it's stronger in some parts of the cosmos and weaker in others, actively pulling harder in certain directions? So instead of a smooth, uniform pressure inflating the universe, we might have a spatially varying dark energy, a force that is actively, as you said, twisting the very shape of the universe's fate. That's a radical theoretical shift. It's forcing cosmologists to explore really wild ideas like early dark energy, where the expansion rate changed dramatically in the universe's first few hundred million years, causing the discrepancy we see today. And if we accept this, the idea of a structured dark energy and the end of isotropy, the implications go so far beyond just fixing the Hubble constant. They threaten the entire cosmological principle. That's the real danger. Remember, that principle, held sacred since Copernicus, insists that no place in the universe is special. But if the universe is not homogeneous and not isotropic, then our fundamental understanding of physics, the constancy of gravity, the speed of light, it could all collapse. We'd be entering a reality where, just beyond our line of sight, the laws of nature might actually start to change. We can't just assume the physics we measure here on Earth applies everywhere else. It's a profound danger, and it's being whispered by these JWST discoveries. We have to confront the possibility that the assumptions we've relied on for centuries, that the universe is simple, uniform, and obedient, might just be wrong. The ultimate mystery isn't just about finding the right number for the expansion rate anymore. It's about figuring out if we live in a universe that is, by its very nature, special, complex, and uneven. It leads us to that dangerous alternative that maybe, just maybe, some places are more cosmic than others. And the future of physics really depends on understanding why.